Hi, it's Jane Akshar here. I've got some more tips about Luxor to help you enjoy your holiday more. Um, in this presentation, I want to cover shops, restaurants, the local culture, and accommodation. Right, shops. Now, the first thing you have to bear in mind is when you're shopping in the uh, Middle East in general, but especially in Egypt, you have to haggle. Now, haggling is a, it's not very easy for a lot of Western people, but the important thing, I think, is to try and enjoy it, to, to look at it as a, a chance to interact with the people and have a little bit of fun. Um, it, if they sort of start at 100, then your starting price, if you say 40, you know, if it's 40%, it's generally a very good rule of thumb. Um, it's also good to maybe come back the next day. So get it to a price, then go back to your accommodation and say, I was offered this vase for um, a thousand, is that a good price? And uh, the people at your hotel should be able to give you a sort of, that was a lot, or wow, that was a good price, kind of feedback on what you've managed to achieve. And, and this is all part of the, the process when you're buying here, is you don't do everything in a rush. You're, you're supposed to take your time about it. And have a little bit of fun with them, you know. Oh, come on, you can't judge me that. I'm a poor broke tourist. Um, they, they do react well to that kind of thing. Um, also, uh, when you're buying papyrus, if you're offered it in the street, and it's in a polythene bag, this is often an indication that you're not dealing with papyrus here. Um, it's banana leaves, and they've been glued together. And the reason they're kept in the polythene bags is to stop them drying out. So it's worthwhile going along to one of the uh, papyrus shops and looking for a Ministry of Tourism sign. If they've got one, they're generally very proud of it and boast about it a lot. So that, that's worthwhile doing to, to get genuine papyrus that's not going to fall apart and put on you. Now, quite often you're offered antiques. Now, sometimes these are, sometimes these are antiques. Don't ever, ever buy those. It's completely against the law and you don't want to have the rather unique experience of sightseeing in a Cairo prison. But there are fake antiques that you can buy that have been made by the locals here, which are really, really interesting souvenirs. Um, and uh, sometimes these, they'll tell you they were made by their grandfather and stuff like that. And, and they are. Um, I've, I've got a few bits and pieces that have been faked, you know, covered in tea and things like that. And they're quite good fun. Um, you know, again, it's the haggling you'll have to do, but it's worth it. Now, if you're taken to a shop by a taxi driver or a guide or someone like that, very often the shop will be paying them commission. Now, don't get uptight about this, because the shop will charge you the same price whatever. So if your guide or taxi driver or whatever is getting a slice of the action, this is nice. It, it, it spreads, spreads the love. Um, and you wouldn't have got it any cheaper. And your taxi driver or guide or whatever will be very, very happy that he's managed to supplement his income like this. So, you know, like I say, don't get uptight about it. You can be aware of it, but don't get uptight. Now here is um, a wall of papyrus um, from a shop here on the West Bank um, that I use quite a lot. And um, this is one that is Ministry of Tourism regulated and quite a good place to buy stuff at. You can probably see in the picture they've all got little prices on them. So you can go along and make a selection and you know what you're paying for. This is alabaster. Now, um, this is quite a, a popular local craft. Um, it's less popular with tourists these days because of uh, weight limits on luggage. 
but it is a very nice thing to take back and very reminiscent of the locals here in um, in Luxor. They, they have been making alabaster here for centuries and you can see some examples in the Tutankhamun treasures. The stuff you can get here, you can get green and brown and white. I quite like the brown because that has some sort of veins in it. And I've, I've got quite a few pieces and they look really nice with a light inside them, like a tea light, stuff like that. So this, this is a nice thing to take back. But like I say, you know, weight limits on luggage have, have sort of hurt this trade quite a lot. This is my favourite shop. It's by Medine Habu and it has a whole range of crafts. This guy goes off into the desert area, the oasis, um, down to Cairo, the western oasis, and he buys from the locals there. And he's got such a range of different like, things, the crafts. He, he also supports women's groups as well. So um, uh, this is a really nice shop, just by Medne Habu Temple, um, and it, it's just a, uh, across the canal. You'll see a mud, low mud brick building. If you ever want any advice about visiting any of these shops, please email me. I'll be delighted to help. Now, Luxor restaurants. Um, nobody comes to Egypt for cuisine, okay? It's food. It's okay, but it's not cuisine. Now, on... Uh, in Luxor, you can get some rather interesting meals at the East Bank Five Star Hotels. So you can get Japanese and Italian and so forth um, in these hotels. A bit pricey, um, but nice uh, variety. Um, one of my favourites is at the Sheraton. They have both uh, an Italian and an Indian there, and I like both of those. Also, in on the East Bank, near the Five Star Hotels, the Sheraton, Senesta, Nile Palace, there's an area called Little Britain. And it's got numerous um, British-run restaurants. Now, there's one little chain which has uh, an Indian, Taste of India, a uh, Chinese fortune cookie, absolutely fat Chinese, and the Regal Lounge, which does an awesome Sunday dinner, um, but it is catering a lot for British taste. Um, there's the Lantern, another great place, great fish and chips. Um, so this little area here, if you're not so confident about eating Egyptian food, um, this is quite a good area to go to get very um, safe British food. Also on the East Bank, you've got Egyptian restaurants. I love them. They're really, really nice. My favourite is called Sofra, um, and uh, they do really excellent food in there. But some of these little tiny places tucked away in a street, um, they're really good food. You're unlikely to get alcohol in these places, though. Um, that they are um, much more strict on the East Bank about issuing licences. On the West Bank, um, where I live, we've got mostly hotels. We have got one or two restaurants um, that are just restaurant only, but we've mostly hotel restaurants. And these are really good, um, very good quality Egyptian food, and most of them serve alcohol. Um, so you can get local beer and wine. There is one uh, really excellent hotel on the West Bank, which is El Mudira. So quite a range of different things there, but like I say, not cuisine. This is El Mudira. Um, it, as you can see, the atmosphere is just amazing. Um, it's uh, quite a distance from the ferry, not walking. It's a, a good 30-minute drive. So um, you need to hire a taxi to take you out there. Uh, the alcohol is a bit pricey, but the food is actually quite reasonable. And I've had lunch there a few times and really enjoyed it. So that's a nice place to go. This is my East Bank favourite, and there's me in the picture, uh, Sofra. Um, and this 
is um, on Mohammed Farid Street near the railway station. It doesn't serve alcohol, but it is hugely popular with people, and you quite often have to book to get in there. It's furnished with lots of um, Egyptian antiques, and I really love the atmosphere there, and it's very, very cheap. So definitely recommend that one. Now, Luxor culture. If, if you're here and you get a, a taxi driver or whatever, um, once or twice, he'll very often invite you along to a wedding. Go! Oh, it's absolutely amazing and they love to have you there. It's a sort of bit of kudos to have a, a westerner taking photos at the wedding and all the people will crowd round to see themselves on your screen. If you know the uh, couple in question well, it's uh, a quite a good idea to go up to a a photography shop and get the, the pictures uh, printed off or something for them as a little present. They'd really enjoy that. Um, these uh, weddings uh, consist of a, a procession going round, um, which is like wacky races but much wilder. Um, and the, it takes the bride from the coiffure to her new home and it's a public, it's part of the wedding, uh, legality of the wedding, it, it has to be publicly displayed and so these big professions showing off the bride and groom are uh, quite good fun, I love them. Um, Moolids, these are religious festivals, our uh, most famous one is Abu Hajj Hajj which is a couple of weeks before the start of Ramadan and um, you can get processions and uh, stick dancing and horse racing and lots of things like that going on and the locals all enjoying themselves. So if you get a chance to go to a moolid, do go. Um, also you can have here uh, camel and donkey and horse rides. Now the camel rides tend to go around the village on the west bank and um, they're, they're quite good fun. Uh, most people um, find the camel getting up and down the scariest part, um, but going round it's quite a nice view and uh, the camel boys chat along and tell you about their lives. Um, donkey rides here, you can do a donkey ride up in the hills um, along the ridge. I call it the poor man's hot air balloon and you get fabulous views looking down on Hatshepsut's temple and the West Bank and the Valley of the Kings. Um, you can also do horse riding here and you, you can do some serious riding. I, I do know some people that are quite uh, expert and they really love the rides here. There's a couple of good stables here on the West Bank. Um, newbie stable I recommend and the, the horses seem to be well cared for and happy. Um, N Nile cruises, a one day cruise on a Faluka. Um, this is one of the sailing boats, is a very, very pleasant way of uh, spending a lazy afternoon after a heavy morning sightseeing and you can watch the sun set over the Nile. It's um, just got to be about the most uh, 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 sort of everyone's dream of Luxor and Egypt is a Nile cruise. Now you can do that for one day, like I say, but you can do cruises from Luxor to Aswan, and these take between three and four days. Um, they go on floating hotels along the Nile, and um, they're a little bit sort of hidey high. Um, the sort of you know, Galabia night, and everybody joining and mucking, and 20 minutes, and you've got to be back on the bus, but. For your first experience of Luxor, it's a very, very popular choice to do a one-week cruise and then one week in a hotel. Um, if you've got children, or you see children, children are a great passport into Egypt. Um, taking your own children along, the locals love children and they're really, really welcoming. They make an effort to talk to them. Children are never unwelcome in Egypt. And likewise, the local children you meet 
um, are all very friendly. They love having their photographs taken and they love little gifts. Um, it's quite good to take them things that they might use in school, pens and pencils, rubbers, little things like that. But a, a big tip about giving gifts to children is give them as you leave a place, otherwise you will be stunned how many children you can assemble in five seconds. And uh, if there's an adult around, give them to the adult to distribute to the children because he'll know the ones that need the um, little gift better than you do. Some of the schools here welcome a visit from people that want to donate little things that will help the children learn here. So um, children, great passport into Egyptian culture. Now here's a local wedding. Um, this is the bride and groom. Now you notice the bride is dressed up in very western style. She has henna decorating her arms and her arms are showing, her hair is showing. And that's a, a rather interesting reflection on, of the culture in Luxor, is the brides on their wedding day dress up very western with a very western meringue-like wedding dress. This is actually my husband's uncle and his bride, um, and uh, as you can see, they're pretty happy. This is a moolid. Um, this is the procession of the saints through the streets, and following that, they have processions of the local guilds or crafts going along. And we think this particular moolid might have its origins in ancient Egyptian culture and be um, a uh, sort of the modern version of the OPEC festival. Um, they're really good to go along to. I took this photo, as you can see from a height, I was in a local hotel, um, so it's quite good not to be actually part of the crowd. You can get a bit jostled, and uh, if you find a good vantage point, it might be better to see the moolid from there, so that you don't get, you know, bashed about or hurt or anything. Now, the final thing I wanted to talk about was accommodation. Now, obviously, I offer my own accommodation in Flats and Luxor, but I wanted to tell you about the other things that were on offer. One of the first things you have to decide is whether you want to stay on the East or the West Bank. The East Bank is the more um, busy side, more touristy side, um, less of the native culture. So on the East Bank we have the airport, we have the railway station, we have McDonald's and we have Kentucky Fried Chicken. We also have all the five star hotels apart from El Madeira Hotel. So I think that gives you a bit of a flavour, it's the more um, nightlife side of things, although as I've said nightlife is very limited here. Um, so if you are more interested in uh, wandering around the shops and stuff like that, then the East Bank is for you. The West Bank is where I live. Um, I'm very into the history, and the West Bank has the majority of the history. There are 24 ticketed sites in Luxor, yeah, 24, and uh, 22 of them are on the West Bank. And we have, we're more rural, we're more villagey, um, we have better views, um, and uh, I, my balcony looks out over onto Hatshepsut's temple, which has got to be about the best view on the West Bank. Um, and uh, it, it's uh, more laid back, less busy, but if you want to get to a bank, you have to go over to the East Bank. Um, so you have to decide which is best for you. The majority of our accommodation is on the West Bank, but we do have one block of flats over on the East. Um, then you have to decide what kind of hotel or accommodation you want. Now, if you're interested in five-star hotels, we've got some um, chains like the Hilton and the Sheraton here. Um, we also have some individual five-star hotels like El Mudeira. Um, we also have some family run hotels. So on the West Bank we have like Nile Valley Hotel, 
which is run by some good friends of ours, Karen and Hamada, and that is just by the ferry, sort of what a two, three star hotel with um, uh, just a few rooms, you know, under 20 rooms, but with a swimming pool. And these uh, family-run hotels are, are very pleasant, um, very convenient, and uh, more, much more atmospheric. And the, when you're putting um, your money in these hotels, it's going into the local economy, whereas your five-star hotels tend to be more the big foreign chains. Lastly, you have self-catering apartments. Now, these do vary widely in uh, standard. Uh, we are more the top end because we're the only ones with uh, swimming pools. So we have several blocks of apartments and um, we uh, go from one bedroom to three bedroom and two bathrooms. And some of them have got in-house restaurants on the site. Um, so you can really choose which is more suitable for your family, um, whether you want uh, um, the ease of a hotel or if you've got special dietary requirements you prefer to cater for yourself. Now this is my Googly building with its swimming pool. That's got seven three-bedroom, two-bathroom flats in it with these huge great big balconies and has great views of Hatshepsut's temple. Um, that also has an in-house restaurant. So you can see you don't have to skimp even if you go self-catering. Um, you can still have a really good, relaxing, luxurious time. So I hope we see you in Luxor. Now you know all about the uh, shops and the restaurants and the accommodation that are available here. And if you've got any questions, I'd be delighted if you email me. Info at Flats and Luxor will get through to me. And um, hope to see you here soon. Thank you for your attention.